FTB Film Study is sponsored by the 409 Tailgate Club. For the best tailgate sauces, barbecue dry rubs, and Bloody Mary mix, visit 409tailgateclub.com today. What's up, guys? Man, let's talk about the Outback Bowl. Let's talk about the first half dominance by the Penn State defense. Let's talk about the adjustment by Arkansas, how they came back. They figured out the inexperience, got the one-on-ones that they wanted, and took advantage of the fact that Penn State was down five starters on defense. Let's break it down. But don't forget, hit like, notifications. Make sure you subscribe for the blog. Here we go. All right, guys, let's talk about this Penn State Outback Bowl versus Arkansas. Let's talk about how in the first half, Penn State's defense was really on point with making adjustments to Arkansas's run game. So first things first, we're going to show you the first play uh, for Arkansas here. They're going to run basically a quarterback counter. This is a 100% design play for Jefferson to get himself on the edge. There are two things that made this play successful. One, they ran a tackle in twist and the end comes back around. And the defensive end does a great job of blowing up the pullers, which allows the linebackers to scrape over the top. Okay, And this is really... One of the biggest ways to take care of counter is to pinch the backside and to pinch the front side and bounce over the top. And they did a really good job. It's hard to see from this film, but I want you to watch the DN come down. He stonewalls the right guard, which basically puts this thing in a really bad spot. Okay. All right. Later in the first quarter, another great play. Away from the running back to the boundary. Penn State ran a bunch of corner blitz to try to help with the run game. So you're going to get a boundary corner blitz here. And watch what happens. Again, you're gonna you're just gonna get you're just gonna get old school inside zone look right here, and you're gonna get a corner who makes this thing have to cut back. Now, what they did a good job of was you got penetration by the defensive tackle. Okay, you also got the backside defensive end who feathers who make the quarterback hold the ball. Okay, and you get a nice easy rebound right here, and you get a nice play. Now, I know they get a couple yards off this play, but great play. Corner makes the whole thing bounce. Backside defensive ends there. Linebackers are in good position. All right, later in the first quarter, now you're going to get the zone read concept. Now, this comes back to haunt them. And I want you to watch how Penn State played zone read in the first half. They have it's real simple. You have a squeezed player right here who comes downhill, who's going to make the quarterback pull. And then you have it over the top. It's called a gap exchange. The defensive end is going to come down a gap. The linebacker is going to go over a gap. So basically what's going to happen is like running option. I've got dive. I've got quarterback. I've got pitch. Okay. Now, the problem is you're going to see this. If the quarterback pulls this ball and runs, he's going to have it wide open because this guy has pitch right now. All right. He, he tosses it. It's an easy play. Penn State does a great job of seeing that in the first half. Okay. Same thing. You're going to get zone read. You're going to have a squeeze player and a spill player. The gap exchange happens backside here. Now, it just happens to do this off of counter. Doesn't matter. He sees counter, defensive end squeezes, safety hit come down in the box plays, rallies it. He now plays the quarterback pull game and you've got a nice, easy stop. Okay. Now not impressed with how they didn't handle the adjustments at half. All right. If we're going to gap exchange inside zone, we have to do it properly. I do the same every time. Remember I talked about gap exchange. You've got to have a guy come downhill. You have to have a guy exchange the gap. The problem is they both come downhill. Nobody's here for the quarterback pull read. And he's too late to get there. He's in bad position. And Jefferson's 250 pounds. And he's going to be impossible to take down when you're caught in space and you don't have a good angle or running start at it. Okay, so first of all, there's a technical issue there. Okay, number two. All right, number two, we're going to watch something else. Let's watch zone read game again. You've got two guys coming inside. They bring the safety down. Now, you have a safety who's about 170 pounds trying to tackle a quarterback who's 250 pounds. And he says, no, dude. I'm from the SEC, and I'm going to smack you in the mouth. Was the scheme there? Yes. Out-talented at that, at that point of attack? Yes. That happens sometimes. Now, you're going to get back away. You remember we talked about before, corner blitz is going to try to come off that. If you haven't noticed, they see back away. Corner blitz is quite a bit in this game. Now, corner is there to make a play. But the problem is you have a corner who likes to play coverage trying to tackle a SEC running back, and that usually doesn't end very well. Okay, and so something that should have been a tackle for a loss ends up being what a four yard gain, five yard gain, and this causes issues and this puts you in second and five. And in Arkansas's offense, they want to stay ahead of the chains. All right, let's watch again. Now you're going to get midline. Okay, so now running back is going to run across face as fast as he can. 
you're going to get the defensive tackle is going to get red. Okay. This is something they hadn't really truly shown much all game. And to be honest, they hadn't shown much during the year, which is even more impressive. So they come across formation. They run an old school outside zone midline. Okay. And what he's doing is he's reading this defensive lineman. He sees the D lineman squeeze and he pulls the ball. Remember, we talked about gap exchanging this, right? You have an outside presence. Now you have one, two guys, and this guy doesn't squeeze hard enough, and you have an empty gap. Great play call. Great play call. Really an interesting idea. There's no reason two guys should have came over the top right here. You already have three for three. This guy can come late. Okay, somebody should be here for the situation. Okay, I understand what they were thinking. They were trying to gap exchange. All right, this is just a good play. Uh, it's a good play by them. I also don't like how the linebacker flew out of this. Issues, okay? Okay, so again, now you're going to get zone re again. All right, now that they're going to do a good, now they're going to get in a situation where they're going to sit there and they're going to have a guy who's going to play the zone read. He's going to be the gap exchange guy. So you're going to get one, two, three, four, okay, five. And this is your gap exchange player. Quarterback sees the guy feathering. He takes it down. Now, linebacker issues. This linebacker, Right here, gets he loses his gap. Zone is all about gap responsibility. He is supposed to be over the top of him in that gap, and that's what causes this play to get taken. All right? So, again, inexperience just kind of started wearing on, on Penn State. Okay? So now we're going to talk about the same thing. Now what you're going to get is you're going to get zone read, but they're going to insert the tight end to the linebacker on the backside. This is an interesting play, a really good play by Jefferson. But I want you to understand how they start gap quarterbacks, they gap exchange, do a good job. They bring the safety off the edge. They squeeze this thing down hard. And again, quarterback pulls, he sees it, he sees this guy come, and he just follows the hole. That's a great play by the quarterback. There's really nothing you can do in this situation. But I don't understand why this guy bails because nothing in this, this guy right here, should be coming downhill right now and hitting this in the mouth right here because nothing told him pass. Absolutely nothing told him pass. He's reading linemen. He's reading the triangle. This is downhill. Nothing tells him to get to the slant. Okay, it's first and goal. Uh, I think it's bad play by the linebackers. Again, inexperienced. It really came back to haunt Penn State. Okay, now we're going to talk about one more. Now you've got the corner to the boundary again. Okay, corner of the boundary. He's got the pull read this time. So your gap exchange is truly there. You're here. Linebacker's going to feather. Your gap exchange guy is now the corner. The corner cannot tackle the quarterback one-on-one. -on -one. You're asking a kid who is not excelling at tackling to be your best tackler. Now, he made up for this earlier in the first half, but they just found and took advantage of the fact that the smaller corner didn't have an opportunity to tackle a 250-pound quarterback. And that, again, to me, that's all about scheme. I thought that was a fantastic job by Arkansas. Um, but again, it goes back to having half your starters on defense out. Okay, so now this is an interesting one right here. This one, this one that blows my mind. Okay, so number one, this is the backup quarterback. Now, the backup quarterback is a kid from Houston, and he's from Fort Bend Marshall, and he was the fastest kid in the nation uh, coming out of high school. He is an absolute burner. Now, we talk about inside zone, and we talk about how they play it. Now, if you do this properly, you should have a squeeze player, a spill player, and this guy should be gap exchanging, okay? Quarterback's going to ride it. He's going to hold it. The guy who's gap exchanging comes downhill, and against a kid like this right here, you take two steps the wrong way, buddy. You don't have a chance because that dude can go. And I don't think people understand that these guys are that athletic. Malik Hornsby was one of the biggest gets that Arkansas could have got a couple of years ago, and he showed right right here. I really struggled with this play. I struggled with the way they handled it, and I truly don't think it's a coaching thing. I think this is 100% inexperience, but it's a great opportunity to grow. Guys, I can't wait till next year. Love doing these breakdowns. I can't wait for another one. You know the drill. We are Penn State.